You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All of you Foxborough faithful, thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage and also your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On Patriots is available wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to download, subscribe, and follow to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I'm your host, Mike DeBate, and I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated, so reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter, on the Bird app, on X, whatever you want to call it these days at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some love to the Twitterverse, please be sure to follow the Locked On Patriots account as well at L-O underscore Patriots. And folks, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, Lowest price, guarantee. And Patriots fans, as your New England Patriots continue to bask in the glow of their 29-25 victory over the Buffalo Bills on Sunday, they're getting ready to play their second straight AFC East Divisional game. And that's going to mean a trip to Miami Gardens, Florida, where the Pats will take on the Miami Dolphins. And of course, we all know it's going to be the second meeting between the Pats and the Dolphins. The first one, the Patriots dropped to Miami at Gillette Stadium 24-17 on September 17th. Yeah, we all remember the Cole Strange lunge that didn't quite get there. Well, the Patriots are going to do their best to make it two straight divisional wins. And to do so, they're going to need a similar, if not better, offensive effort that they got against the Bills last Sunday. Mac Jones stepped it up and proved himself more than capable of being on a pro football field. But he needs to carry that momentum into this week. And to do that, he's going to need a solid effort, not only from his offensive line, but also from his pass catchers. And luckily for Mac, some of those pass catchers are coming alive in the form of three prolific tight ends, Hunter Henry, Mike Gusecki, and Farrow Brown. And if we're going to talk tight endage, you know that there's no one else in Patriots Nation that could come in and lend the wisdom and counsel and expert tutelage when it comes to 12 personnel than my good friend, Claire Classy Claire Cooper of Pat's Propaganda and the host of her very own Patriots podcast, The Claire Perspective, going to pop in here in just a moment. And we're going to talk about Hunter Henry and Mike Kosicki. Are we finally seeing that tight endage tandem that the Patriots have been craving for quite some time? We're also going to give some well-deserved love to Pharaoh Brown, who continues to come up big in the biggest moments. Can the Patriots count on that to continue? Claire's got her perspective on the matter, and she's going to share that when she pops in here in just a moment. She's also going to give her insight on what we might see from Miami's tight ends and also from New England's tight ends, because after all, we are now turning the page, and it's all about the Miami Dolphins. And of course, folks, as you can see, this is already shaping up to be an interesting game. Keon White was absent from Wednesday's practice, still in concussion protocol. Trent Brown was limited with both ankle and knee injuries. That forced him to leave Sunday's game against the Buffalo Bills. And on Miami's side, the injuries are starting to pile up, folks, and significant ones. Tyreek Hill dealing with a hip injury that kept him out of action on Wednesday. Could it possibly keep him from suiting up on Sunday? Well, folks, we're going to have the very latest on Miami's list of walking wounded, New England's list of walking wounded, when we cross the streams tomorrow on Locked On Patriots with my good friend and colleague Kyle Krabs, host of Locked On Dolphins. Folks, you are not going to want to miss crossing the streams on Crossover Thursday between Locked On Patriots and Locked On Dolphins, but today a very special treat. And without further ado, I welcome in our resident tight endage expert as we begin this Patriots tight endage party of three. New England had hit share of heroes and big-time performers on Sunday. Mac Jones came up big, rebounded big time. Mario Douglas, Kendrick Bourne, all getting a lot of love for what they did in the open field. But we'd be lying if we said that the game was not won if it wasn't for the hands of a big tight end. And that is exactly what we're going to focus on today, folks. We're going to give some love to tight endage. And how could we possibly host a Patriots tight end party of three without 
the Empress of Tight Endage herself, the Countess of Claz, the woman that not only provides wisdom and counsel here, but also expert tutelage on 12 personnel. She is my good friend, Claire, Classic Claire Cooper of Pets Propaganda and her very own Patriot podcast, A Claire Perspective. Thank you so much for joining me here today, Countess. Welcome back and bringing some light back to the Locked On Patriot Studios. Oh, well, thank you so much for inviting me. It's always fun to go on to Locked On. And yeah, it's a bit of a tight ended week, isn't it, really, coming off the bat of, of that win? So yeah, how mm-hmm. could how could I not? I very gladly squeeze you into my calendar. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Claire, National Tight Ends Day was earlier this week. Mike Kosicki catching the big win for the New England Patriots. Hunter Henry and Farrow Brown, huge receptions. How could we not invite you on this week to <laughs> you know, regale us with all of your expert analysis on tight endage? And folks, Claire has definitely brought it today, and we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to dive right into it. Claire, we heard so much in the offseason, um, a lot of it coming from these airwaves from you and I about 12 <laughs> personnel and Bill O'Brien coming back into the fold and utilizing the two tight end sets and really resurrecting what had been such a big part of this offense for a number of years with guys like Rob Gronkowski, you know, that we know the whole list. We don't have to go down them. We're going to live in the present. Uh, I'll throw Ryan Izzo into that list just because I know it always makes you happy, Countess. And we have to make sure that the Countess is happy. But bottom line, Hunter Henry and Mike Kosicki are starting to round into that tandem that we all believe they would. Hunter getting key receptions, one of the big, uh, you know, receptions that he, uh, uh, you know, caught on Sunday, 14-yard strike from Jones on the Pat's final scoring drive. That helped set up the game winner. And, of course, Mike Kosicki being the threat in the red zone, that's exactly what he was brought here to do, and he did it in a big way. But as I like to say on occasion here on Locked On Patriots, you see things us mere mortals don't see (laughs) when it comes to tight endage. Over the course of the last couple of games and how they've evolved into this season, what are you seeing from both Hunter Henry and Mike Gusecki as a pair, maybe even individually a little bit, that leads you to believe that this is the beginning of something special for the Patriots offense? Well, you can't only talk about the 12 personnel when you talk about the Patriots offense right now, because as I know that we may touch on a little bit later in the show, there's that 13 or 23 personnel because there's Mm -hmm. the inclusion of Farrah Brown in that. And I think he's made a big impact. But, you know, as I said, I know that we'll talk about him a little bit later, but the tight ends were evenly split or they had an an even split of of reps slash snaps for this game. Um, Hunter Henry had 30, Mike Kosicki had 30 and Farrah Brown had 23. And Mm -hmm. I know some of the spacing out is going to be because Hunter Henry will have had, you know, it has sustained that ankle injury. So something that he's nursing, but they seem to be most successful. Success- oh, word I can't seem to get today. The most <laughs> successful. There we go. We've got it. Um, when they've got that three tight end, you know, in unison, it, it, it may be that sort of key to unlocking the success, maybe. It may have a lot to do with the wide receiver room. And, you know, that's something that we would look at separately. But Mm. it is something that has been a big success. And through the weeks one to seven, I did note, I did do a little bit of research, some statistics that I tried to pull out that through weeks one and seven, the Patriots are sixth in the whole of the NFL um, for tight end targets. And that's Mm. behind some of the top teams that utilize their tight ends that you would really be knowledgeable of, such as the Chiefs with Travis Kelsey and the Vikings with TJ Hawkinson. So they've had 58 targets. um, And I know obviously you've got to put numbers that, you know, it's relative when you have to make the comparisons, but it seems to be something that is successful utilizing the tight ends. And we knew going into the season that Hunter Henry was a good fit here. He, he's already proven that he was a good fit with Mac Jones. We saw that obviously much more predominantly in 2021 because it was a much, a much more successful year. But um, yeah, you've seen that he fits. Unfortunately, Johnny Smith didn't. And bring, the bringing in of Mike Gesicki was something of a, you know, the slight concern of, you know, they've tried it once with one of these athletic sort of tight ends. Is it going to be something that that is can be successful? I'm going to be careful with that word. Actually, I'm not trying to use it too much. <laughs> no, That's but okay. seriously, <laughs> it was it. There, there was that cast of shadow of a doubt because it, it didn't work last time, and he's been you know off to a slow start. This is his first touchdown, and it is week seven. And and I have my sandwich bet, as some of the listeners slash watchers will know if they if they're fans of my show, that the sandwich bet that I have that Mike Gesicki would be the top receiver 
um, of the Patriots for this 2023 season. Now, in my defence, <laughs> I, I made that bet when we before the season had actually started mm -hmm. and before he had his his slow progression into the season. Um, but you never know. There's still time, hopefully, maybe, <laughs> for him to become the top one. But, you know, we've seen the utilisation of Hunt to grow and become more successful. And I think a lot of it is, a lot of it comes from, the fact that the Patriots have taken a while to get started. And I know that you've talked about on this show plenty of times with plenty of your guests, the reasons behind that, you know, the lack of success that they have had recently and the O-line sort of falls foul to plenty of that. But other things are affected by that in getting started. And it just sort of maybe feels like now that the offense is realizing under Bill O'Brien that this is how they're going to move forward. They know that Hunter is that proven entity and he can really be utilized in the mid. You know, they, they've got three sections of um real sort of strength. They've got Hunter in the in the middle of the field. They've got Gaseki, as you said, you know, a very end zone threat, particularly because of his fluidity and his ability to utilize his his height, you know, really to his advantage. And then they've got the um the real positiveness of, and then we'll touch on again in a moment with Farrah Brown with with his skill set. So it's it's a very rounded out, you know, little group that they've got there, and some of it may be having to put a band aid over any issues that they've had with wide receiver, you know, with speedy wide receiver or, or lack of wide receivers. But it also feels like it's evolving into a really good offense, and maybe having the three tight ends set or utilizing the three tight ends or you know even just Hunter and Gasecki if you want to just look at that and you know under the spotlight it's something that is has its ability to throw defenses off as to how it's going to be utilized and tight ends are you know it's a it's a position that can be very difficult to mark um in in the sport and I know that the Patriots defense have their own little few issues with you know with covering tight ends it, it, it it's something that is a very dominant, a very strong position. And I, I know people who are wide receiver fans. I, I'm not not a fan, don't get me wrong, we'll say, you know, the speed of a wide receiver. But I think the versatility of really good tight ends is what makes it difficult for defences. Mm -hmm. And you've got a plethora of skill set now with these three tight ends. And the Patriots offence can use that to their ability and, you know, maybe make, make it their you know, key still set going forward. I mean, I'm enjoying it. I don't know about you guys, but I am really enjoying it. And I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that most of Patriots Nation, ones that don't want the Patriots to tank, of course, really enjoyed the Gusecki catch and, and the win over the Bills. I mean, can you get any more delicious on National <laughs> Tie-In Day? A Patriots win over the Bills with Hunter playing a you know predominant part because he's they're all my favorites now. I'm really struggling now. They're just all my favorites because I just love the Titans and now I've got three to adore. But um yeah, I, I'm just finding if you're asking me my favorite, it just depends on one which given day it really is. Wednesday today, maybe it's Gesicki, but maybe in like a few minutes when we move on to the second segment, it will be Farrah Brown. Who knows? But yeah. It's sort of how can you not love it at the moment? So let's just take that moment just to enjoy it, maybe. Absolutely. So well said. And, you know, Farrow, I think, has been such a pleasant surprise that we're going to give him his just due. We're going to give him his own yeah. segment in just a moment. Uh, and we yeah. will definitely touch on that, <laughs> folks. But bottom line, I really, really think that you made some great points on Mike and on Hunter. And you knew that coming into this season, they were going to be focal points of this offense. Mike Gusecki is a red zone threat. And with all due mm -hmm. respect, I know there are a lot of people out there saying, well, Mike Gusecki hasn't lived up to what they thought he was going to be when he came in. Folks, the Patriots hadn't taken many trips down into the red zone prior to their game against the Raiders. A lot of the um, curtailing of Mike Gusecki's statistical output has been because the Patriots offense has simply been so futile. And there really yeah. hasn't been an opportunity to utilize his strength. So for anyone criticizing him, always put things in perspective. And I think, Claire, you did that perfectly because you lend that Claire perspective for all of us. Okay, <laughs> there, folks. But bottom line, Hunter Henry, on the other hand, we all know his prowess coming in. Hunter is a team captain. Yeah. There's a reason why he's a team captain. It's not just because he's got a good personal relationship with Mac Jones. It's because he is a guy that people can look to for inspiration, for positivity. He exuded it when he was in Los Angeles. He continues to do that here in New England. And whenever you need a big reception, Hunter Henry is usually in the mix to grab it. And again, Sunday was no exception. 14 yards you need, go to Hunter Henry, spark that drive. It's on a third and eight, fresh set of downs, and all of a sudden now you're cooking and you're in business. So that's mm -hmm. the type of player that you're getting with Hunter. And again, you're seeing that 
in clutch situations, it's not just enough to be able to grab the reception. You have to be able to run the route correctly. And Hunter is one of the best route running tight ends I've ever covered. So in that respect, I think you're absolutely on the money when it comes to that. And with Gusecki now, folks, and the Patriots utilizing those red zone formations, I think you're going to see a lot more of him as well. Hopefully what we saw on Sunday is not an anomaly for the Patriots offense. Claire, we alluded to it, and we're about to get to it in just a moment, folks. <laughs> Barrow Brown, so let it be written, so let it be done. And he's been doing it on the <laughs> field, folks. And he's been doing a great job of it and really proving the Patriots. Uh, I think really showing everyone that he's not just a blocker, folks. This guy can get out in coverage and can actually be a pretty good receiver. And right now, he's on target. To break a record held by one of the Patriots' greatest receivers of all time. Which record and why has Farrow Brown been so good here in New England? Claire and I are going to fill you in in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. A proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on listeners, we've all been there. You want tickets to the big game or your favorite musical artist, and you just can't find an easy way, an affordable way to do it. Well, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. From preseason Celtics, regular season Bruins, acts such as Travis Scott and Andrea Bocelli, just a few of the exciting events coming to the Boston area on game time. And game time's all-in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without all those hidden fees. They're actually obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. And that includes zone deals, where you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N NFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Patriots fans, thank you so much for joining us here today on Locked On Patriots. It is a Patriots tight endage party of three. And who else <laughs> would we even think about having on today's show than the Empress of Tight Endage herself, who is lending expert tutelage on 12 personnel and so much more? She is Claire, Classy Claire Cooper, columnist extraordinaire of patspropaganda.com as well as the host of her very own Patriots podcast, The Claire Perspective. Check that out wherever you get your podcasts. And also the Pat's Propaganda show that she hosts along with her lovely assistant, Chudders. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All kidding aside, anytime Claire puts voice to microphone or pen to paper, it is appointment viewing, listening, reading. Check it all out. She's great. And you know that because she's here on Locked On Patriots today. Claire, we talked about Hunter Henry and Mike Gusecki, and judging by the big <laughs> smile on your face just a few moments ago, everybody knows that you're enjoying this, you know, and the renaissance of tight endage that's going on in Foxborough right now. But a big reason for that renaissance has actually been the rule of a pharaoh. And that's right, pharaoh Brown, folks, <laughs> has been everything that the Patriots hoped he would be and so much more. Not just a good blocker, which everyone knew he was coming in here, He's proving to be not just like Bill Belichick called him big target, and it's 6'6", 258, folks. Yeah, he's a big target, but he's also doing a great job as a receiving, a pass-catching tight end. What has leapt off the page for you for Farrell Brown, Claire, when you watch him take the field, and in terms of what you've seen from him so far, how excited should Patriots fans be for the future of Farrell Brown here in Foxborough? Well, I'm so glad that you've worded it like that because I, I want to throw back to, um, sorry, small self-plug here. Back in September, I did a piece on Brown because he see, he was that unknown entity. He right. was sort of, when he sort of made plays, it was like, wait, which tight end is that? So I put out a piece there. So I hope that you all 
picked that apart back in September. And if you didn't, then it's still there on the Pat's Check Propaganda out, website. Folks. So please do go and look at the like the background story of Farrah Brown because he has been in the league for a while. He was an undrafted free agent in 2017, not to sort of spoil the whole article, but there's plenty more information. So it's his seventh season and it kind of feels like one of those things that he's finally being recognised. Maybe he's finally being taken seriously by the offensive coordinator in Bill O'Brien that he can be more than just a blocker or maybe he's just improved his skill set over the time to become something that is more than a blocker and boy is he something more than a blocker I mean you mentioned what Bill said um coach Bill said in a press conference recently but I'll kind of wanted to get it word for word really because he said that Brown he's got some size he can block he can catch the ball a little bit and he's good he's in good com. I can't even read my writing now. Oh, he's a good compliment. Sorry, apologies. So bad writing. He's a good compliment, obviously, to Hunter and Gaseki. So, and that's mm-hmm. what I alluded to sort of earlier in the show is we can look at these guys separately, like in a vacuum, and they're all decent in their own right in regards to what their strengths are. And Farrow's strength, yeah, was the, you know, the blockingness of him. But the weakness in the O-line really made him more of a necessity. And then when Bill O'Brien maybe realised, he already knew, not certain, because I know there was an overlap in regards to um, coaching with him previously, Mm -hmm. that it's maybe he's sort of seen, actually, this guy can do a little bit more. Maybe let's take him seriously and see that he can do it, you know, give him the opportunity to do more. And, and he, you know, he's, he seemed to be excelling at it at the moment, which gives the Patriots, as, as I said previously, such an extra dynamic on the field that they've now got three tight ends with the strength in their skill set. The one thing that I sort of wanted to mention was the snaps increased versus the Jets for Farrah Brown to 25. Um, his blocking has been significant, but he was only really being utilised minimally. But he was a big part of the first 100-yard rushing performance that the Patriots had so far this season. So the one thing to look at is when you look at the Patriots have been slow to start. It really sort of feels like that at the moment. And I know that we've alluded to already that we hope that the momentum continues against Miami. And it's important for that momentum to continue. And what also has as gained momentum during the season as the Patriots have tried to rev it up is the usage of players such as Brown in areas that he can actually excel that you wouldn't have necessarily initially thought. So it's just a positivity that they've got such... Um, a wide range of skill set when they've got these different tight ends now on the roster. And he, yeah, it just feels like maybe his seventh season, this is the the golden season for him. They've now been able to utilize him for all his advantages, for all his strengths. And going forward, you know, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. As you said, the Patriots have got some serious tight endage on their roster now with, with Hunter Henry and his two touchdowns, Gesicki with his one and Brown with his one. And yeah, they're, they're ranging from 6'5 to 6'6 in, in the three of them, from 2'4'5 to 2'5'8. So they've mm. they've got some they've got some good sizable tight ends there on their roster to, to utilize and not just to make a thing of their size, because yeah, you've got you've got to have it and you've got to be able to use it. And I think they've just got, as I said, a, a trio of tight endage that know their strengths, that the offense know their strengths now, and they're able to maximize them for their strengths. Perfectly said. And that is the strength of a tight end. As the position has evolved throughout the years, you're seeing a lot more prowess when it comes to pass catching. And Mm -hmm. part of that is not only knowing how to secure the football, but also to protect it and also be able to gain positive yards. And this is something that Bill Belichick praised Farrow for earlier this Mm -hmm. week when we spoke with him. Bill has been very complimentary about him, and you're seeing it in the statue. You mentioned the increase in snaps. He's getting out there and he's showcasing exactly what he can do. Five catches for 137 yards this season. That's not exactly going to light the stat sheet ablaze when it comes to other tight ends in the league. But when you look at the fact that he's averaging 27.4 yards per reception, that's impressive. And that puts him in very impressive company. That was the first to tweet this out right after the game on Sunday, where the highest average yards per reception in a season for a single Patriots player is a record that is 42 years old. It's held by receiver Stanley Morgan, who should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, folks. Conversation (laughs) for another day. Put Stanley in there. He deserves it. 
Yeah, one of my hot button issues, Claire. Really, he should be in there. But <laughs> I, I bottom just, line, yeah, I was just thinking, <laughs> oh, this needs to be a conversation for another time. <laughs> but bottom line, we are talking tight endage today. But that is my soapbox, Stanley Morgan for the Hall of Fame. But he holds that record for the Patriots so far with a twenty three point four yard average, and he did mm-hmm. so in nineteen eighty one. You talk about the players that have come through here in New England, and I won't go through the laundry list, but you know that several Hall of Famers, several prolific pass catchers have come in, and no one has approached that mark. There is a lot of football left to be played, but if Brown can continue this type of productivity and the Patriots can use him in this fashion, he could remain within striking distance of Morgan's record, and all of a sudden that puts him in rarefied air in New England and what he's doing right now, bottom line, if he can continue to make plays in tandem with Hunter Henry and Mike Gusecki, Patriots now have a party of three in that tight endage room and it's paying off big yeah. time. And he said it earlier this week, he says all three of our tight ends can make plays. You can't ask for more than that when you're asking for an offensive resurrection and when you can get it from the tight endage room, you know, you're doing something right. So definitely a good move on Bill Belichick's part <laughs> and the Patriots were asked to bring in Farrell Brown. <laughs> Yeah, completely. Could not agree more. <laughs> well, Claire, we've talked about the Patriots' prowess on tight endage, and unfortunately, all good things come to an end. It's Wednesday, so we now have to turn our attention away from beating the Bills, and we have to turn our attention to the Miami Dolphins. And you can see that on Claire's face, folks. She is not a <laughs> Dolphins fan. If there is an area to be had on this Miami roster, it might be tight endage. What might the Patriots do defensively to force Tua Tagovailoa to go to his tight end? Claire is going to inform us and give us her wisdom and counsel and maybe even a little clairvoyance when it comes to your New England Patriots against the Miami Dolphins when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast wraps up right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, football season is here, and there is no better time to use prize picks, the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. In fact, they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including all those pros and those sharks out there, you pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection and watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Here's the best part, folks. Listen up. You're going to love this. With Price Picks reboot policy, your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for NFL games and for college football top 25 matchups. If you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. And Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. And if you're a Patriots fan or even a Dolphins fan, you know how valuable injury insurance can be. So don't delay, do it today. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 by going to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. And don't forget to use the promo code locked on NFL. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Locked on listeners, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster. And here's the best part, folks, for free. You won't believe how easy it is to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs until you try it. Make sure you add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to, and they help you do it faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on Locked On Patriots, making us a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. Don't forget, tomorrow here on Locked On Patriots, Kyle Krabs, host of Locked On Dolphins, is going to join me as we cross the streams. At what better time, folks? Ghostbusters crossing the streams, Halloween, it all fits together. That's Dolphins down in Miami Gardens, Florida. Kyle is the best in the business at covering the Dolphins, as you know from his numerous appearances here on the airwaves. Check out Crossover Thursday tomorrow, all across the Locked On Podcast Network. A special consideration for Locked On Patriots and Locked On Dolphins right here on the channel tomorrow, so don't miss it. But in the meantime, we continue to be regaled, entertained, and very well informed by the Empress of Tight Endage herself, the Countess of Claz. <laughs> Not a loss, Claire. <laughs> Let's just carry on then. <laughs> Let's not put it. Let's just talk <laughs> about Miami. We're on to Miami, as they say. So, yeah, I know you wanted to talk about the Dolphins. And the one thing that you had me on here for is tight endage. And so I wanted to allude to the fact that the, the statistic that I did pull up prior to this show in regards to the Patriots being sixth in the league for their tight end targets, the Miami Dolphins are last right at the bottom for tight end targets in the NFL league. And it, it's definitely, obviously, a team that isn't utilising their tight ends, which for the Patriots may be a little bit of a positive because, as we mentioned, covering tight ends is difficult and the Patriots' defence has a bit of trouble when it comes to covering tight ends. So the lack of utilisation of those tight ends might be something that is a very positive when it comes to the Patriots' defence succeeding when they go off to Miami. But, I mean, they, they do have a reasonable tight end when it comes to Smythe, I believe it's pronounced, because mm -hmm. it looks like Smith with a Y in the middle. So it, it, it always throws me off as to how people want to pronounce that, actually. But, yeah, he's I've watched him. He is a good tight end, but it, it isn't something, it isn't part of their offensive skill set. And, and as I said, that's I believe that's a positive for the Patriots' defense. And whether or not that's the key to their success, you know, that's something maybe here and there. The other thing is, when you sort of think about in regards to teams practicing and that kind of thing, the Patriots have got this trifecta, as we mentioned, of tight ends. So it's something that in practice, they have got plenty of tight ends to utilize to practice against. Miami a less of a utilization of tight ends. So that's something that they may may not practice as much considerably. So that gives the Patriots an edge because they've now going down to Miami with three tight ends that maybe the Finns aren't prepared for. Now I know a lot of people will say, oh, you know, that's just a little bit of hearsay, you know, that's just look on their side, that kind of thing. And I'm sure that they do practice plenty against tight ends, but it's there's always those little things. And the one thing we feel Belichick is kind of accentuating those little errors, those little flaws that teams mm. may have. So maybe, <laughs> just maybe, that when we go down to Miami, when the Patriots go down to Miami, there will be a Miami upset. The demoralised Finns coming off a loss. The jubilant Patriots, jubilant, jubilant Patriots, <laughs> oh, me and my words again. Coming, it's going to get too excited. Um, coming off a win, <laughs> plus this tight endedness of the trio from the Patriots and maybe the lack of the production from the, the Finns. Maybe if you roll that all up together and smash it together, you have a recipe for success. But we're on to Miami, so we shall see. Yeah, absolutely. I think in a lot of ways you make some great points about Miami. Look, in terms of defending tight ends and in terms of how they're going to defend the Patriots' tight mm -hmm. endage trio, we can't say tandem anymore, Claire. It really has to be a trio because of Farrell Brown's prowess. And you know whenever he gets on the field, you know there's going to be an opportunity for him to get the ball. So even if he's there as a decoy at the very worst, it's something that you know other teams, opposing teams, have to be able to game plan for. Deshaun Elliott is their strong safety. Brandon Jones comes in uh, on occasion as well. You're probably going to see some safety coverage on these guys. You might see a safety drop over, try to blanket Hunter in the open field. Obviously, if it's going to be in the end zone or in the red zone, you're going to have linebacker help coming over. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of cornerback help. I think this is going to be the safeties and the hybrid linebackers that are going to defend the Patriots tight ends. Now, as mm -hmm. for how the Patriots might look to contain Durham Smythe, who definitely is a formidable force, but not someone who is a focal point of that Miami offense. So again, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of cornerback help on someone like a Durham Smythe. You're going to see 
the strong safety position come out. I think you're going to see Kyle Duggar on him a little bit. I think you might see Adrian mm -hmm. Phillips play him a little bit. Adrian is someone that can cover tight ends. I know he's had his difficulties as of late with that, but he's still someone that has that hybrid linebacker star type safety uh, mindset. And he can be able to provide some coverage there as well. And then, of course, you know, you start dipping in and maybe Miles Bryant comes over a little bit cheating from the slot if the Patriots go with Jonathan Jones and uh, um, J.C. Jackson as their uh, top two corners this week. And now with Jack Jones back into the mix, maybe you might be able to see uh, uh, Miles Bryant come back and play a little hybrid. That could be something to watch as well, folks. But. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, it's going to be fun. And there is going to be a lot of tight endage <laughs> excitement on the field on Sunday, folks. Claire, what can I say? Thank you so much for lending your wisdom, your counsel, all of your expert tutelage when it comes to 12 personnel and so much more. Before I let you go today, my friend, please let everyone know where they can reach out to you, interact with you, and what we can expect coming from the great voice, the great pen of Claire Classy, Claire Cooper in the coming weeks. Well, I think we're going to have to start talking about 13 and 23 personnel, Mike. I think it's too important now that there's the three tight ends. You said that Two earlier. Key. Absolutely. Too key. <laughs> but yes, as always, thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun to be on Locked On. It's always fun to be on here with yourself anyway. So, thank you. yeah. Um, where to find me? Yes. As, as you alluded to, my, my docket has changed. I have moved over, switched, and we have different shows now. But A Claire Perspective, a Patriots podcast, is still there for you. Every, wherever you get your podcast, most of the places you get your podcast, brought to you by fullpresscoverage.com. So please, there is an episode every week. Mm -hmm. There is an episode on its way to you right now, somewhere out there in the in the cloud or whatever, in, in the in the interweb universe, it is, it is mulling and, and it will be dropping. So you will get that very shortly as we record this on Wednesday. So hopefully you'll have that by Thursday. So yeah, mm -hmm. please do check out the latest episode of A Claire Perspective. And as Mike said, I am doing a show with for Pats Propaganda even. So for Pats Propaganda.com with my previously my assistant and now my co-host Chudders. So it's called Pats Procrastination and it's basically a kind of a game recap wrap up that we try and bring you pretty much the day after the game if possible, if schedules do permit. So yeah, that is a weekly thing as well on the Pats Propaganda YouTube channel. So please ensure that you're subscribing to that channel to enable you to get the show notifications each and every week so that you get that and yeah please do check out patspropaganda.com because I am still writing on there it, it is a little bit less nowadays because you can only do so many shows and so many articles in one day but um, I recently posted I believe it was yesterday an ode to fandom uh, your light so I hope you go and check that out on patspropaganda.com so yeah keep your eyes on patspropaganda.com and make sure you're subscribing to a clear perspective so you do not miss an episode ever <laughs> Absolutely, folks. Check it all out. And you can expect to see Claire back here every single time the Patriots score a tight endage touchdown. No, I'm <laughs> but, you know, you get well, the point. Well, it could be a heavy docket for me. <laughs> it could be a very heavy docket. Yeah, but all kidding aside, uh, we do enjoy all of your wisdom and counsel, not just when it comes to tight endage, folks. Claire is very well versed in all the ins and outs, the ups and downs of this team, and will continue to seek her wisdom and counsel here on Locked On Patriots throughout the season and beyond. And we want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Locked On Patriots each and every day. Folks, we always remind you that Locked On Patriots is a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And in that vein, I am your host, Mike DeBate. And on behalf of my illustrious co-host today, Claire Classy, Claire Cooper, we remind you to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow for Crossover Thursday on Locked On Patriots.